In this video, we're going to work with solving again. However, we're going to specifically talk about how to solve with fractions and decimals, like an equation like this one. Now, I could go through the process that we always go through when solving an equation. I could go ahead, draw my balance scale, um, subtract one third from each side, multiply each side by three halves because I multiply by the reciprocal and go from there. And if that's the way you choose to do it, that's fine. However, there is another option that you can do where you can start using multiplication so that you can actually rewrite this problem with no fractions. Okay? Now, again, we're mathematicians, not magicians. You can't just erase the fractions and decide that you don't want them there. You have to mathematically go through a process. And that process is, because our denominator in all of these fractions is 3, if I were to multiply by 3, that would give me a numerator that is now a multiple of 3, so that when I divide, I'm going to get a whole number. The other way to think of it, if I were to multiply by 3, that would cancel that out. Okay? Now, yes, we can do that. Because when solving equations, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. That's why solving an equation works. That's why the idea of the balance scale is there. Whatever we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So what I'm going to do is multiply this side by 3, both of them. So I'm going to use the distributive property to do that. Now, to balance my scale, I also need to multiply this side by 3. Okay? A couple ways to do this. 3 times 2, if you think top times top, bottom times bottom. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that becomes 2x. 3 times 1 is 3, divided by 3 is 1. So that side becomes 2x plus 1. You could also think of it as canceling. That cancels that 3 and that 3, so I'm left with 2x and 1. Now on this side, 5 times 3 is 15, divided by 3 gives me 5. Or, same idea, that cancels to give me 5. So by multiplying the entire equation by 3, which was my denominator, I now have an equivalent equation that has no fractions, and I can solve this one. 2x plus 1 equals 5 is a lot simpler for most of us to solve. Subtract to get 2x equals 4, divide by 2, and I have that x equals 2. Now when I check my answer, I do want to check it back with the original equation, not with this one in case a mistake was made from here to here. Okay, I will give you another example. One where you may only have one fraction and not multiple fractions. So, one-fourth x plus 10 equals 13. Now this one only has one fraction. Again, you don't have to go through that process I just showed you. It's an option. If I were to do that here, I would go ahead and multiply by 4 because that's my only denominator. Now even though these two aren't fractions, I still need to multiply by 4. So I would again use the distributive property on this side, balance my scale, and multiply by 4 on that side. When I distribute, that gives me just x. That gives me 40. And 13 times 4 is 52. This now becomes a one step that you can solve. You guys know how to do it from there. The other option is when you don't have the same denominator, when you don't have a common denominator. So 2 fifths x plus 1 half equals 3 fifths. So we have different denominators. What you want to do here is we can still multiply through just like I did with the 3. However, I can't use just a 5 or just a 2. I have to use a common denominator of 2 and 5. There's actually multiple choices, multiple options here. Uh, 10 is the one that I'm going to use because it's the least common multiple. However, I could use 20. I could use 40. Five, whatever number both 5 and 2 go into will work. You want to keep the numbers as small as possible, though, so the least common multiple is your best option. So, again, I would distribute the 10 through. In my mind, this is what I do. 10 times 2 divided by 5 is 4x. Half of 10 is 5. Here, in my mind, I'm doing 3 times 10 and then dividing by 5. 3 times 10 is 30. 
divided by 5 is 6. Now from here, this is the equation 4x plus 5 equals 6 that I can go ahead and go through my steps and solve. The answer does end up being a fraction of 1 fourth. Again, plug back into the original to solve. The last thing you may see is not necessarily fractions, but decimals. Remember, decimals can be rewritten as fractions. So 1.4x plus 2.55 equals 6.75. Again, you guys could go through the process of just subtracting 2.55 and then dividing by 1.4 and being done. But if you really prefer not to work with the decimals, we can also multiply through. Um, because this is only in the tenths place, multiplying by 10 would move that decimal over 1 and give me 14. It would give me a whole number. However, multiplying by 10, moving that decimal over 1, would still give me a decimal here and a decimal here. So, you want to look at your biggest decimal or out to the furthest place. These go out to hundredths, so what I want to multiply by is 100. And distribute that through, and of course, balance my scale and multiply by 100 there. So multiplying by 100 is moving it twice, so that becomes 140x. That becomes 255, and that is 675. Now I can subtract divide by 140, and I can move on without ever having to work with the decimals.